questions or price gouging. The president tweeting this this morning, local politicians who run Washington, D.C. poorly know a windfall when they see it. When asked to give us a price for holding a great celebratory military parade, they wanted a number so ridiculously high that I canceled it. Never let someone hold you up. <laughs> that from the President of the United States. D.C.'s mayor, though, taking that attack as a badge of honor, responding in kind. Here's her tweet. Yep, I'm Muriel Bowser, mayor of Washington, D.C., the local politician who finally got through to the reality star in the White House with the realities. $21.6 million. President tweeting this this morning. Local politicians who run Washington, D.C. poorly know a windfall when they see it. When asked to give us a price for holding a great celebratory military parade, they wanted a number so ridiculously high that I canceled it. Never let someone hold you up. That from the President of the United States. D.C.'s mayor, though, taking that attack as a badge of honor, responding in kind. Here's her tweet. Yep, I'm Muriel Bowser, mayor of Washington, D.C., the local politician who finally got through to the reality star in the White House with the realities. $21.6 million of parades, events, side demonstrations in Trump America. Sad. The president says maybe there can be a parade next year. In the meantime, he'll attend a smaller military parade at a military base just outside of Washington. And he says he'll also travel to Paris for another big military parade there. Um, this isn't all Muriel Bowser's fault, is it? Of course not. <laughs> this is the president decided to do without any thought, without any. Uh, he was in Paris a year ago uh, for the Bastille Day uh, celebration. He got the idea of his mind. Wow, this is a good parade. I want to have one like this. It was widely uh, seen inside the Pentagon as not being a good idea. That. Uh, you know, it, A, it would be expensive, but even more than that, never mind how expensive it would be, just the image that it would show, this is not what the United States has done traditionally. Uh, so the, you know, ever since then, they've been trying to sort of walk it back. So by now saying uh, he'll be going to a Paris after the midterms, I'm not sure that that's uh, you know, how that's going to be viewed at that point. Maybe he'll want to be getting out of town. Uh, I think I remember Obama taking a trip in 2010 after getting shellacked in the 2010 oh, midterms. No. Uh, it's a good a place for a president to go. Yeah. But on this, the military, no one thought it was a good idea. And there was a report, ABC News, I believe, that the overall price tag, the mayor talked about what D.C. said it would need right. for security and for demonstrations. Like The ABC said the overall price tag was somewhere in the ballpark of $92 million. Now, the Defense Secretary, Jim Mattis, generally known, he's a retired general, is a sort of a straight-laced guy. $92 million, Mr. Secretary? Whoever told you that is probably... Uh, smoking something that's legal in my state but not in most states okay i'm not dignifying that number with any reply uh, i i would discount that and anybody who said that i almost guarantee you one thing they probably said i need to stay anonymous no kidding because you'll look like an idiot <laughs> and yet, and yet, though, it was just hours after that that the president himself pulls the plug on it and gets in the tweet war with the mayor. Yeah, I mean, 92 million or 21 million, it's still a lot of money. And for exactly what, that was a question that a lot of people had. I mean, you saw American Legion's statement yesterday, a rather mm -hmm. very strong statement, said this money should be spent elsewhere, like providing veterans care. And maybe there should be a parade after the war on terrorism huh. is ultimately won. That's been the big concern. Perhaps put the focus, not just the money, but the focus on military actions rather than a celebration. It's funny you would say that because Kellyanne Conway, counsel to the president, out on television this morning, essentially asked, again, whether it's $21 million, whether it's $92 million, is this spending millions, tens of millions of dollars on a military parade because the president saw one he thought was really cool in Paris and wanted to have one on his own? Is that a good use of taxpayers' money? I think the best use of the American tax dollars, the 700 billion, is to give them the resources and the respect they, they, they need, not, not disrespecting the flag and yelling at our brave men and women in uniform when they walk by and saying America was never great. Go tell that to all those people in the military. That's uh, called a punt. Uh, she didn't answer the question about the parade. She moved on to the increase in military spending. The president did win as part of the budget with Congress. And, and remember, um, deficit hawk isn't necessarily always the first words that come into mind when you think about the president. I mean, he didn't campaign on cutting. I mean, he said he wouldn't touch Medicare, Social Security during the campaign. He was lambasted when he was on the verge of signing that major spending measure uh, by fiscal conservatives earlier this year. But so you can think when he first got the idea of a parade, the idea of the cost of this wasn't necessarily foremost in his mind. Right, and you heard Kellyanne Conway at the very end there talking about saying America was never great. That was a swipe at the New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. In the next hour, you'll hear his uh, latest. ...are working through their second day of deliberations in a Virginia courthouse. 
This before leaving for the day yesterday when they asked the judge four questions, including a request to define the meaning of reasonable doubt. They're deciding Manafort's fate on some 18 counts of tax evasion, bank fraud, bank fraud and hiding foreign bank accounts. The verdict also carries implications for special counsel Robert Mueller's broader Russia investigation. President Trump, of course, has been calling that investigation a witch hunt, and he's been applying pressure to wrap it up. A short time ago, Trump was asked point blank about Manafort's fate. I don't talk about that now. I don't talk about that now. I, I think the whole Manafort trial is very sad. When you look at what's going on there, I think it's a very sad day for our country. He worked for me for a very short period of time. But you know what? He happens to be a very good person. And I think it's very sad what they've done to Paul Manafort. CNN's Jessica Schneider is outside the courthouse. In about an hour, the judge is expected to hold a hearing on the release of some information that could include uh, the mysterious private conferences that were held during the trial that we couldn't hear. Uh, what are you learning about those conferences and when they might be released? Yeah, Jim, so this hearing will be at 2 p.m. As the jury continues to uh, deliberate here, the judge will hear this motion to unseal the transcripts of some of these secret proceedings. Now, this was a motion that was filed by news outlets, including CNN. And if it's granted, we might finally get to see what was happening inside the courtroom and up at the judge's bench when all of these secret proceedings were happening. We've seen them several times. At certain times, the court was completely closed off to the public. At other times, the lawyer on both sides went up to the bench to talk with the judge and that's when a noise or static machine was turned on so everyone in the courtroom couldn't hear it. So the judge will unseal the transcripts of some of these secret proceedings. Now this was a motion that was filed by news outlets including CNN and if it's granted we might finally get to see what was happening inside the courtroom and up at the judge's bench when all of these secret proceedings were happening. We've seen them several times. At certain times the court was completely closed off to the the public. At other times, the lawyers on both sides went up to the bench to talk with the judge, and that's when a noise or static machine was turned on, so everyone in the courtroom couldn't hear it. So the judge will decide, or will hear the motions, or the, hear the oral arguments at 2 p.m. as to whether or not to unseal these transcripts. So if they're unsealed, we might get a glimpse as to what exactly was happening, particularly in what was five hours of secret proceedings on Friday. We still have no idea what was happening. It sort of delayed this trial, delayed the closing arguments a bit. One thing, however, we will not see if these transcripts are unsealed. We won't hear any of the mention, and we know there was at least one, of the special counsel's ongoing Russia probe. That will remain sealed because obviously it is an ongoing investigation. So, Jim, that all happens at 2 p.m., but all the while, the jury will continue deliberating while the judge is hearing this motion in his courtroom. The, ju the jury now going on three hours of deliberations after we saw seven hours yesterday. Who knows if they are any closer to coming up with a verdict. Jim? All right, well, they got 18 counts to consider. Jessica Schneider there at the courthouse to politics now and President Trump's security clearance hit list. A White House official confirms to CNN that the president may soon strip more former or even current officials of their security clearances, this despite a growing and bipartisan backlash. Former CIA Director John Brennan was the first to have his clearance revoked. Thirteen former senior intelligence officials who've served both Republican and Democratic presidents have now signed a letter criticizing that move. And just a short time ago, the president was asked whether he's trying to silence critics like Brennan over the Russia investigation. There's no silence. If anything, I'm giving him a bigger voice. Many people don't even know who he is, and now he has a bigger voice, and that's okay with me because I like taking on voices like that. I've never respected him. I've never had a lot of respect. And Senator Burr said it best. If you knew anything, why didn't you report it when you were before all of these committees, including their committee? So he had a chance to report. He never did. This was just came up lately, and... It's a, it's a disgusting thing, frankly. White House correspondent Caitlin Collins joins us now live from the White House. Caitlin, the White House named nine other officials whose security clearance, they say, when Sarah Sanders announced, announced this, are under review. Do, do we know who is at the top of the president's hit list now? 
The president named him specifically today, Jim. That would be Bruce Orr, who is a current Justice Department official. So he's, that makes him a little bit different than everyone else on that list. He still works at the Department of Justice. And taking away his security clearance, which the president said today he's prepared to do rather quickly, calling him a disgrace, would effectively render him unable to do his job. But when the White House is asked why they wouldn't just fire him instead of taking away his security clearance, Sarah Sanders only said that they didn't have any personnel announcements at this time. Now, Jim, what the president did do there as he was boarding Marine One is draw a direct line between taking away these security clearances and the Russia investigation. Listen to the president put it in his own words. I say it, I say it again. That whole situation is a rigged witch hunt. It's a totally rigged deal. They should be looking at the other side. They should be looking at all the people that got fired by them. They should be looking at all these FBI guys who got fired and demoted. Uh, it's a really weird, it, it's, it's not us. It is a rigged witch hunt. I've said it for a long time. So the president there lashing out at this investigation. He seems to be using his presidential powers to do so. And Jim, he seems ready to go after anyone who he believes is involved in this investigation. Seems to be the case. Caitlin Collins at the White House, thanks very much. Critics say that President Trump is striking back at his detractors by threatening to revoke those security clearances. This is the president himself drew a direct connection between the Russia investigation and his decision to strip John Brennan.